plum and plum once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Plum. So maybe you think a prune is a plum, and maybe a plum is a prune. Maybe you enjoy prune juice. Maybe you've never even eaten a plum. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on why, because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the plum. All right, first up, just a little bit of background information. A plum is a fruit of the subgenus and genus or genus prunus. Yes. <laughs> also, plums are the are in the same family as cherries and peaches. Hmm, who knew? Also, plums come in a variety of colors and sizes. The colors range from yellow to white, green, and red. So take a look at the picture. I thought I'd go ahead and show you those different types of plums, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. And lastly, the taste of the plum ranges from sweet to tart. Plum juice can even be fermented into plum wine. Now, I always thought that wine came from grapes, but apparently it can also come from plums. So the next time you're drinking wine, you may want to ask yourself, is this grape wine or plum wine? Interesting. Who knows? All right. Now it's time for a few fun facts. What is a prune? You may be wondering. Well, guys, here's the answer. A prune is a dried plum. That's it, right? So we can kind of equate this to a raisin being a dried grape. That's right. Now, here's something else that you may not know. Is that the peak season of plums is from May to October. So if you love plums, you probably want to go to the grocery store during the months of May to October. Why? Because number one, they're going to be in peak season. And number two, chances are they're going to be on sale right and here's our last little fun fact plums should be stored in the refrigerator unless the plum is too firm and you want it to ripen quickly then keep it at room temperature in a dark place like a paper bag nice so for all of us who are out there purchasing plums and we're not sure if they're ripe or not it's easy take it home leave it out on the kitchen counter and make sure you place place it in a paper bag why? Because that'll help it ripen faster. So there we have it, guys. Just a few fun facts about the one and only plum. By the way, if you are eager to find out what a prune looks like, take a look at the picture. There you have it right there. All right, now it's time for a few not-so-fun facts. Here we go. Plums contain oxalates, which may cause kidney stones. For this reason, people with the history of kidney stones should avoid consuming plums at all costs. It's also believed that in some people, these oxalates decrease calcium absorption. Now that's not a good thing, which results in calcium levels rising in the kidneys. Ultimately, this may cause formation of small or even large stones in the kidneys and the bladder. People with kidney stones may be able to eat a small amount of plums, so take it slow and pay close attention to the results of plum consumption. So, as we can see in our picture, kidney stones aren't necessarily all that large. As a matter of fact, some of them are less than a centimeter in diameter or size. But ultimately, it doesn't matter how big or how small they are is that you got to focus on the fact that number one they're not supposed to be in the human body and i've heard that they hurt like hell <laughs> that's right very painful very unpleasant so those are our not so fun facts about plums so guys listen up if you are susceptible to kidney stones or maybe you've had them in the past then you may want to stay away from plums so there we have it a few not so fun facts about plums all right, now it's time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about 
food labels. Yes, food labels. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really what we're talking about is percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it's divided into three main colors. The first color is lavender or purple. The second is yellow. And the third one is a light blue. Let's go over the lavender portion first. Now, taking a look at our sample food label, as you can see, the percent daily value column is highlighted in purple. So the percentages they can be as high as 100 to as low as one i'm sorry to as low as zero percent now the yellow portion basically highlights nutrients that unfortunately do a really good job at promoting sickness illness and disease within the body temple so when it comes to nutrients such as saturated fat trans fat cholesterol and sodium you really want to make sure that whatever you're eating or drinking has a very, very low amount of those particular nutrients. In other words, you want to make sure that those percent daily values are as close to zero as possible. Next, let's take a look at the nutrients that are highlighted in light blue. We have dietary fiber, we have vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Now, these nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients rather than promote disease within the body temple they promote wellness and health so if anything the next time you're eating or drinking something please make sure that whatever it is that those percent daily values are closer to 100 percent now when we talk about the 520 rule we really want to be a little more specific right so if the food or beverage item that you're consuming has anywhere from 0% to 9% of any particular nutrient, then it is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item that you're consuming offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys. The ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now let's dive into the nutrition facts. In other words, when we eat a plum, what's in it, right? So here we go. For today's lecture, we're simply going to say that a single cup of sliced plums is equal to one serving. So what are we going to get in this one cup? Well, only 76 calories, 19 grams of carbs. Look at this, 1.2 grams of protein. And you guys thought fruit didn't have protein. Well, as you can see, it clearly does. Also, 0.5 grams of fat. Next up is 2.3 grams of dietary fiber. Amazing. Now we have vitamin C coming in at 26% DV, excellent source. Vitamin K coming in at 13% DV, good source. Then we have vitamin A coming in at 11% DV, good source. Then we have potassium at only 7% DV, so it's not a good source of potassium. Next up is copper at only 5% DV, so not a good source of copper. And lastly, we have manganese coming in at only 4% DV, not a good source. However, if you are concerned about getting more potassium, copper, and manganese, not only would I advise you to consume more plant foods, but remember something. These percent DVs are based on a single serving, which is only one cup. So if you want a higher percent DV for the entire day, all you have to do is eat more plums. Yes, it's just that simple. All right. So now that we've gone over the nutrition facts, let's now dive into the health benefits. But before we do, I want to talk with you guys about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, 
everything happens for a reason. That being said, here's what we need to understand is that the health benefits, well, those are the effects. The causes are the nutrition, or shall I say the nutrients that are in the plums, right? So let's go through the health benefits one by one. Number one, plums are a high source of antioxidants. Now, what are antioxidants, you may be wondering? Well, they're chemicals that are found in plants that basically help to deactivate free radicals. Now, what is the purpose of deactivating a free radical? Well, free radicals do a really good job at causing premature aging, cancer, and diabetes. I'm sorry, not diabetes, but cardiovascular disease, right? So if you want to reduce the likelihood of premature aging, cancer, and <laughs> um, cardiovascular disease, then please eat more plums. Now, the question is, which antioxidants are found in plums, you may be wondering? Well, say hello to vitamin C, lutein, cryptoxanthin, zeaxanthin, neochlorogenic acid, and chlorogenic acid. Next up, plums aids digestion. Now, the question is, which phytonutrients aid digestion? Well, say hello to fiber, carotenoids, and polyphenols. Also, plums lower cholesterol. That's right, guys. So if you have been diagnosed with high cholesterol, then it's definitely time to eat more plums. Now, the one nutrient that's in a plum that helps to reduce cholesterol is soluble fiber. Next up, plums improve cardiovascular health. Now, the question is, which phytonutrients in plums help improve cardiovascular health? Well, the answer is anthocyanins, chlorogenic acids, quercetin, cachins, and vitamin K. Interesting. Also, plums support cognitive health. Now, for those of us who may not be familiar with the term cognitive, right, all that simply means is that you're able to think clearly and critically, right? So if you want to keep your brain functioning to its optimal state, it's easy. Eat more plums. Now, the question is, which phytonutrient in plums help to support cognitive health? Well, say hello to polyphenols. Also, plums aid skin health. Thank goodness for vitamin C. It boosts our immune system. Thank vitamin C and zinc. Yes. Lastly, well, two more, sorry. Uh, plums reduce the risk of diabetes, right? So thank goodness for flavonoids and soluble fiber once again. And last but not least, plums boost bone health. That's right. Now, which phytonutrients boost bone health? Well, say hello to polyphenols and potassium. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots and lots of health benefits from the one and only plum. All right. Now it's time to talk about food. Yes, plant food at that. Guys, normally our go-to website for everything vegan is ForksOverKnives.com, but for today, I thought I'd switch it up just a little bit and introduce you to a brand new vegan website. It's called EllaVegan.com. Once again, EllaVegan.com, and that's Ella with only one L. Now, I went to ellenvegan.com and I found two amazing vegan plum recipes that I want to share with you right now. So here's the first one. It's entitled Plum and Apple Crumble. Take a look at the picture. It looks delicious. Our second recipe is Upside Down Plum Cake. Sounds like Upside Down Pineapple Cake. Well, regardless, take a look at the picture. It looks amazing. Now, if you are inclined to make either one of these dishes, I'm going to help you out. All you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I'm providing a direct link to both recipes. That's right. Now, here's the good news. When you get there, you're going to find a lot of information, such as an ingredient list, preparation time, as well as instructions as to how to make these dishes. So do coach to your favor. Go to the website, 
read the instructions, make the dish, taste the dish, and then come back to the video and let me know exactly how it tastes. So there we have it, guys. Not one, but two amazing, delicious, nutritious vegan plum recipes from ellavegan.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the recipes. Coach D, thanks for the nutrition facts, as well as the not-so-fun facts, right? But what I really want to know is, when should I eat more plums? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that's your question, then the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more plums, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Yes, Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, some of us may not know what the challenge is, and that's okay. So if this is your first time listening to any of Coach D's videos, here's what you need to know about the challenge. The 23% challenge is a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, and your relationships. Now, let's quickly review something. The challenge is a seven day program, meaning it is the first seven days of every single month, the first all the way through the seventh. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's April 1st, June 1st, or even December 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right. So maybe you are intrigued about Nature Day. Maybe you want to try Nature Day. Maybe you're the type of person who's considering transitioning to a plant-based diet, right? Maybe you're the type of person who has been stricken with the big four, obesity, type two diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, right? Or maybe you're having some type of digestive issues. Maybe you're having some type of skin issues, right? Well, whatever the case may be, I'm here to offer you just a little bit of help. You know, there's an ancient physician, his name is Hippocrates, and he simply says, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. Before today, I want to make a slight revision to that. Let plant foods be thy medicine, right? <laughs> Guys, put the word plant before the word food because not all food offers medicine. Plant foods do the job just fine. So what I like to offer you today is this. This is a very easy way for you to make that transition. So you can try to become a 3% vegan, a 13% vegan, or a 23% vegan like Coach D. Now, I'll go through them individually. First up is a 3% vegan. Now, what does that mean? It simply means that you pick one day out of an entire month to eat only plant foods and drink only water. Nice. Secondly is a 13% vegan. Now, what that means is that you pick any four days out of the month. Now, that could be the first four days, which I suggest, or you could do one day per week. I'll leave it up to you right? So during those four days, you're only going to eat plant foods and drink only water. Lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. So what does that mean? It means that Coach D only eats from the five food groups of plant foods. So what are they, you may be wondering? It's all fruits, all vegetables and herbs, all legumes, meaning beans and peas, all nuts and seeds, and lastly, number five, are whole grains. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about Nature Day. All right, now some of us may be tempted. Some of us may really, really want to try Nature Day, right? So if that's you, I wanna offer you some help, some guidance, some tips. So here are Coach D's tips to help make your Nature Day successful. Tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, when you get in there, here's what you're going to do. The first place that you're going to visit is the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of the fresh plant foods are located. Secondly, walk on over to the freezer aisle. Why the freezer aisle? Well, because that's where you're going to find all of your frozen plant foods. Now, believe it or not, fresh versus frozen. What's best? Which is better? 
Well, don't worry. Why? Because the nutrient content of both are pretty similar. So don't fret. Tip number two, go to a farmer's market, right? I do understand that a lot of people now are going the organic route, right? So if that's you and you must eat organic plant foods only, well, farmer's markets are definitely the place to be. Why? Because farmer's markets only cater to organic plant foods. Here's my third tip. Go to the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So once you're finished with the produce section and the freezer aisle, just walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on the grocery store, they may term it the kitchen, whatever the name is. Prepared dishes section, the kitchen, just talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian, but vegan options. Now, depending on you like what you see, go ahead and ask for a sample. They'll give it to you free of cost, taste it, hopefully you like it, and then purchase it either by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really, really like it. My fourth tip is to go visit a vegan restaurant. Now, don't just visit them, actually sit down, enjoy the ambiance, and of course, eat. <laughs> now, here's the one major advantage to going to a vegan restaurant, is that they hire vegan chefs who basically know which plant foods to combine to give you the most delicious, nutritious dishes. And my last tip, tip number five, is to, in some way, shape, or form, get involved with a vegan meal prep company. Now, here's the advantage of dealing with this type of company, is that they not only make the food, but they also deliver the food, and all you have to do is eat. So it's one, two, three. They make it, they deliver it, you eat it. So there we have it, guys. Five tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day. This comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. We have inquiring minds. So we want to know, what is a prune? <laughs> Very simple. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the video. So if you missed it, just simply rewind it. Now, if you want to answer, please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I leave, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love plums. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out, but always remember to take care, God bless, and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.